Hello and welcome to Coffee with Conduit. My name's Mike and I'm gonna be covering the latest news in the world of digital marketing. This past weekend, the 61st annual Grammy Awards was brought to our screens. Google and Apple used some of the hottest talent in the music industry this year to present their groundbreaking emoji technology. There was no let up in the battle for the light bit, with Miller Coors using the platform to defend themselves from the Bud Light corn syrup attack. It seems the attackers really put Miller Coors on the ropes, but no one can doubt their ability to fight back against the brand. In other news, Facebook has acquired Grok Style. This is AI shopping technology that was used in the IKEA app for people to put furniture in their houses before purchasing the item. It turns out that Super Bowl 53 wasn't a complete waste of time. In the days following the very forgettable event, we saw some brands increasing their social community humongously. Number one being TurboTax, who saw huge growth in their YouTube and Twitter community. Since it's tax season, that could be money well spent. And finally, the talk of the town right now are the two documentaries released by Netflix and Hulu on the Fire Festival. Rob sat down with our social media engagement specialist, Chloe McGinley, to talk about these documentaries. <laughs> All right, and welcome to the first interview with Coffee with Conduit. Today we're going to be talking about the Fire Festival, in particular the two documentaries that just launched on Hulu and on Netflix. The documentaries dive into the Fire Festival produced by Billy McFarlane, uh, the excellent marketing that went into it, and then the utter failure that the festival ended up being. Uh, to talk about this, we have our social media engagement specialist, Chloe McGinley. Hello. Chloe, so you, you actually told me to watch both these documentaries. I did. I'm glad I ended up watching the Hulu one as well. It, it gave a really unique uh, aspect compared to the Netflix one. What were your take? Yeah, I think you definitely have to watch both of them. Um, they definitely complement each other. And while they tell the same kind of story, they give a little bit of a different perspective. I was a little hesitant with the start of the Hulu one because it started to get into the whole millennial conversation. Yeah. And if this festival got blamed on millennials, that would have <laughs> really soured Blamed the documentary. On <laughs> exactly, right? exactly. But then it, it really started to get going and I thought that from a marketing perspective the Hulu one was a little bit more interesting because it was a little unbiased. If we're looking to the marketing that Jerry Media produced, mm -hmm. probably watching the documentary that was not produced by Jerry Media uh, would give us a little bit more unbiased. So uh, right. what was your takeaway from the marketing perspective? Um, well I thought if anything the one thing that did go extremely well with this festival was the marketing um, from that uh, first promotional video you know with the models frolicking on the beaches in the Bahamas um, and everything down to their influencer marketing campaign it worked it went viral and they ended up selling out their festival so I think you know from a marketing standpoint at least that was successful even if the actual business plan was a complete disaster. So to anyone who was saying that influencer marketing is questionable, that it's dead, it's ineffective, I feel like this documentary really proves the, the validity of influencer marketing. Definitely, yeah. When Fire Festival first went viral, a lot of people were questioning, you know, is influencer marketing um, dead? Is it going to be um, still utilized after this? And I definitely don't see it going away anytime soon. Um, and we saw just the power that that campaign had um, without using any traditional media. They used only influencers. Um, I think they paid 400 influencers to all post that orange tile at the same exact time. And, you know, it got people to stop scrolling and to pay attention. Um, Kendall Jenner was paid a quarter of a million dollars just to post one post about fire festival um so so on a just, local level uh the you know the clients that can't pay kendall jenner a quarter <laughs> of a million dollars right. to make a post uh is influencer marketing still an option for them how, how do they reach out to these people definitely um you know there's the macro influencers the biggest ones like kendall jenner bell hadid who were in that promo video but um on a micro local scale, we have micro influencers who are actually very um, effective from a marketing standpoint. Um, and even though they have a smaller following, a smaller online community, it's a very engaged community. And they tend to see those influencers as more credible than some of the larger influencers because of their smaller following. You know, the followers have a closer connection to them. They feel like they're, you know, friends with them rather than uh, 
a celebrity. One thing I found very interesting was the power of the orange square. That, that's such a unique idea. What, what's the philosophy behind that and why did that work so well? Um, I think just the fact that it was that one simple bright color, no text, no image or anything, and the fact that it was all posted at the same time, it got people to start talking about it to um, you know, stop scrolling their feeds and say, wow, what is, what's that? What's going on with that? Um, so just a great example of thumb stopping creative, disruptive yeah. creative. Uh, I think that's something that can really be done at the local level as well. Uh, when, when you're posting, and I think especially on social, that generic canned, this is my social post mm -hmm. type thing re really just ends up being scrolled past and that's almost got no value to it. When you're talking as if you've got a personality, when you're doing something that just breaks the norm, I think that's where the engagement really starts to happen from what I've seen. And the fact that this orange square posted 400 times mm -hmm. launched this festival that Billy really arrogantly said so much had to go right for it to be this big of a failure. I think the orange square really launched kind of what went right with this and created such a brand around this festival for Definitely. it to become as big of a failure as it was. Definitely. Chloe, so watching these two documentaries, it had to be fascinating for you that this is now so mainstream and it's really just based on your area of expertise. Yeah. What are your primary takeaways from these documentaries? Um, just my main takeaway was that authenticity matters. You can have the best, most thumb-stopping marketing campaign, but at the end of the day, if, you're, if you don't deliver on the promises in that campaign, then you completely lose the trust of your customers, of your stakeholders. So for us as marketers, it's always important to be transparent and honest with the content we produce on social media and to always be responsive to customers, whether they're trash talking your brand, um, just to always you know, deal with these things as they come up rather than deal with the huge blowback later. Um, so from an engagement standpoint, always staying on top of um, what people are saying on social media and really addressing and solving the problem before it turns into a fire festival. <laughs> I, I completely agree. I think that in this situation, if those comments and all the, the feedback that was happening on the festival was made public, if it wasn't deleted, then the issue becomes known much more in advance. Mm -hmm. And at that point, while it would have still been considered a pretty serious failure, it wouldn't have been the fire Festival level of failure. It wouldn't have had people go there. There wouldn't have been all the footage from the actual attendees going into the FEMA tents. It, it would have been... Uh, a, a failure from a standpoint, but it wouldn't have been, I don't think, preventative enough from them actually being able to try and produce a V2, whereas now they're banned from producing any festivals for right. X amount of years you I know, think they in that area. they had so many chances to save it, kind of, um, just by being honest and upfront with their customers and saying, this is what is actually going on and, um, you know, allowing people to then make the choice if they still want it to come. So that's what turned it into just a failure and into fraud. I had a few main takeaways. One was the power of good marketing. I mean, it was, this went from being nothing, from a, a nobody in Ja Rule putting on this event to becoming um, so hyped that it was allowed to fail as big as it was. Uh, and I think that transparency became a huge um, talking point within this. So uh, we, we talked about Cherry Media and their involvement in deleting comments. Uh, I think that it is possible for them to win back some trust, win back some credibility. I know they just put out a press release indicating uh, some of their new practices that they have to really take a look at. And that they mentioned that it's no longer attribution, uh, you know, being enough, it's now going to be permission based. Mm -hmm. So the content that they're using, they're going to be getting permission for. And I think that taking steps towards transparency allows you to not get in over your head. So if they were transparent in this process, uh, it would have been exposed for what it was, but Jerry Media wouldn't have been at fault in any capacity. Right. Uh, it would just be on Billy McFarlane in terms of that festival. Uh, but when you try and cover up, it turns into a snowball, and that's really resulted in uh, a very big failure for them. So I, I think they can come back. I think they're taking steps uh, towards coming back um, in, in a pretty good way. Uh, but I think that the transparency, the trust, the credibility, these aren't just words. They come off as buzzwords uh, a lot. People chuck these around, but when it's hard to do is when that really you know kind of comes out so it was hard for them to you know allow these 
uh, kind of comments to, to come through, especially when you've got a very large client, you know, asking you to delete them. But that's where you have the opportunity to kind of put your money where your mouth is. If you want to talk about being a transparent agency, don't be the one that's, you know, being un untransparent behind the scenes. So uh, to me, I think that the, the trust, credibility, and transparency, uh, this was such a huge example of this, but that this happens at the local level too. Uh, so when you're dealing with uh, any social media accounts, when you're dealing with, with marketing for these local businesses, these virtues still come through very strong uh, as well. So to me, the takeaway of this was just uh, be honest, be transparent, you know, be creative. So they, they crush in the first part by this super creative thinking. If they follow that up with, you know, transparency, then they're just the awesome marketing team. But, but for me, it was just kind of a the shadiness that Billy McFarland pulled everyone in and, and that's what resulted in this, this failure. But I did see that Jerry Media um, donated um, what they made from the festival to the Bahamian people. That's so that, I think yeah. that was a good move on their part. Um, definitely being socially responsible um, in response to their involvement in the festival. Excellent. All right, so a big thank you to Chloe McGinley for joining us today on Coffee with Conduit, the inaugural episode. Thank you for watching. Uh, please go to the comments section. Let us know what your take on the Fire Festival documentary was. Let us know what other topics you'd like to discuss. If you want to learn more about Conduit, check us out on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've got new content coming out three times a week. Uh, we hope it's going to be really engaging. We hope to hear from you. Uh, we look forward to keeping this going. So we look forward to a lot more great episodes of Coffee with Conduit, and we'll see you next week.